What you just watched was my first ever playthrough of Beta 1. As you can see, a few things have changed since South 11, and some minor changes since the recording was originally made. One of the most notable changes is the updates. I think the concept for updates is great. Kenneth really did pull this off well and it genuinely shows. Keeping your software's tech level up to date is essential to stay afloat, and you now fix bugs with individual updates rather than having your support team do the work. Instead, your support team will verify the cured tickets, then delegate the work to programmers to fix the bugs. In addition to that, there is a small chance for your support team to automatically fix some bugs if you have at least one worker with a third star in the support specialization. Traits are great too. I like to choose any employee that is the capacitor trait since it's now possible to get them to work from 8 to 6 without needing a raise in salary. On the contrary, I typically avoid the cup holder trait since the fees for IT can rack up quickly. In all, these traits make employees more unique while keeping everything as balanced as before. I have yet to actually try out add-ins and subscriptions, but from what I hear, they work great. Lead designers are kind of the mascot of your software now, and lead designers with a high creativity score can seriously boost your sales figures. Hardware design is another feature that's been known for a while, and I'm certain it's the future for data modding. Pictured here is a fridge and a cash register I made in the hardware designer for consoles. Regardless, it's an ifty cosmetic feature that allows you to visualize your hardware products. You can enlarge and shrink certain parts of your design. Even adding accessories to your designs is possible as shown here. With the advent of hardware design, you may think that Beta 1 is going to make mods harder to create. Au contraire, Monami, furniture modding is now way easier to grasp with the new furniture editor. It's got stuff to help you figure out components and textures, and even interaction points. There's even two new core dumping video tutorials on it, and even another one on hardware design. Don't worry, I'll tell Bob Zniak to link them in the description. The revamped notification UI is nice, and doesn't feel cluttered anymore. The refreshed icons for contracts, distribution, and research are sleek, too. Hiring in Beta 1 is easier than ever now and your support team will finally come alive with the compatibility filter. Additionally, you can filter for secondary roles, specialization, and even traits. As mentioned in the last briefing, the applicant list will only refresh once a month, so you should hire wisely. Finally, the software release screen, it's nice, it's pleasant, it feels rewarding to release your hard work now more than ever. The rating seems skewed to be unfavorable toward you, but I cannot confirm if this is true. Also. Screw who's who. Get a clue, you ruin my ratings. All right, enough of his shenanigans. Let's bring you the facts. Firstly, many aspects of the gameplay montage are already outdated, so I'll write down all the changed features with timestamps in the description. I hope to keep it updated for at least a week after publication. Bob's forgot to specify that updates can increase tech levels and they are bundled with version numbers. Your software's version number is displayed in sql.techlevelupdate.bugfix. Add-ins work very similarly to updates. They retain active users and bring in more sales. You do still need to provide updates for subscription software, since your user base will wane away from your product in favor of other companies' software. AI companies now always sell shares of themselves, regardless of their financial status. What this means is that you can finally get subsidiaries that don't go bankrupt in six months. Hooray! Speaking of stonks, you can now make money from excess power from solar panels and the new wind turbines. Of course. Although, storing the power for dark, windless nights in the new batteries is always a better deal than constantly selling your surplus, so you should take advantage of this. Another change to bills has to do with rent. Paying your rent is now a lot harder so you can't sit in your garage making an OS for 5 years straight and becoming a millionaire. Don't tell this to the speedrunners, but OSs and other big products now require way more employees to make, so you can't get your co-founder squad to make bank. Try making an antivirus to start from now on. Funnily enough, this brings me to co-founders. Have you ever gotten tired of paying your employees' salaries? Well, look no further. Get yourself some co-founders. Co-founders take an equal portion of the company when incorporating. After five years, you can buy out all their shares, or leave them with only one share to continue exploiting them. Software Inc. is only one step away from allowing you to make consent. Oh, 
Never mind. Showers. Look at the new showers. Employees can now get their own bikes and you have to provide them with showers, or else they get a bit stinky. Firefighters and fire trucks have been added. They hold magical powers that can shoot out water up to two thirds of a kilometer upwards. That is, if you manage to build that high, citation needed. Dividends are on the up too. You make a lot more money keeping stocks in your own possession, so you shouldn't immediately sell them once the company's growth starts to stagnate. All of this and more is coming in beta 1. It's a really big update. If you'd like to learn more about what's coming in this update, Kenneth should post an announcement any day now, which I assume should include all the nitty gritty you crave. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. This has been your March briefing. Goodbye.